Two years ago, we came here to Washington, D.C., shoulder to shoulder, with our voices raised in unison, demanding recognition, justice, and reparations. That moment was etched into the records of our struggle. And now, brothers and sisters, we are going to return here to Washington, D.C., not merely just to reminisce, but to reignite our spirit of determination, to amplify our voices, and to reaffirm our commitment to the cause. Join me, Tariq Nasheed, here in Washington, D.C., at the Rally for Reparations, Juneteenth celebration at Freedom Plaza. We're going to have a vast array of phenomenal speakers, guests, leaders, and activists who's going to reignite that spirit of Majawa that's within us and our lineage. You don't want to miss this event. Go to rallyforreparations.com. That's rallyforreparations.com. Come on down here to Washington, D.C. Be a part of history. Join me. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for justice. Stand up for your ancestors. Rallyforreparations.com. See you here. Boom. There it is. What's up, man? I'm here. I'm in the building. How y'all living, man? How's everybody doing? Let me start putting this on my social media. How y'all live, man? We're here. We're here. Glad to have y'all in here. Hold on one second. Glad to have y'all in the building. Welcome to Tariq Radio. Just putting this up on my Twitter. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me just put this up real quick. All right, man. What's up, man? I'm here. And I'm going to ask everybody that you retweet, repost, let everybody know that we're here. Glad to have everybody tuning in. I'm a little late. I'm a little late. But, you know, I'm, I'm a busy brother doing a lot of stuff. And we're in here. We're in the building, ladies and gentlemen. I'm waiting on everybody to pop on up. Um, Puppy Akute. That means peace to the family. Um, shout out to the FBA family. Shout out to the non-FBA family. So Jackson, Mississippi in the building. That's what it is. Shout out to Jackson, Mississippi. All right. Man, man, man. A lot of stuff going on tonight. We won't be on too, too long, but we are going to be very effective. We're going to chop it up like we do. Um, so much stuff we got to touch on. Um, so much stuff in the news. Did y'all see it? Some of this stuff I can't show because I don't want to get flagged. Um, um, somebody, y'all mentioning Trump. Y'all see the dude who burned himself up over there at the Trump hearing? Trump is having a hearing, and the dude went out there and set himself on fire. This fool died today. This dude died from his injuries. Why he would go out there and set himself on fire is beyond me. But um, People out here losing their minds. People are losing their minds out here. So it's going to be a very interesting election season. Family, folks are going to major extremes out here, family. People are going through major extremes. So this election year is going to be very, very interesting. But we're going to be on top of our game. We're going to be codified. Um, there's some crazies out here, man, that's willing to die for the, whatever their beliefs are. This dude, whatever he believed in, he might be nutty or whatever, but he stood on business from the beginning to the end. And it, it had something to do. I, I don't know if he was a Trump supporter, but he's showing dedication. See, y'all don't sleep on that. We look at it as just some kind of crazy maniac. But when folks are out here, that's like a jihad. That's like a jihad. That, that's somebody's like, we're this serious about our guy. Yeah, he stood on business from fire to desire. He didn't stand on fear. Y'all better understand how some folks in the dominant society, I will give them that. Boy, they will crash the hell out for what they believe in. All right. 
You say that's obtuse behavior for a former president who started an insurrection. Listen, man, um, these people are standing on what they believe in, man. And, and I'm, you know, I ain't mad at people standing on what they believe in. Sometimes you gotta, if you believe in some, stand on it, man. Somebody's gonna have to be serious about what they believe in. We have to be serious about what we believe in. We got to be serious about it. We got to stand on business. We got to stand shoulder to shoulder and say, hey, man, this is what we stand on. Yeah, we can look at that. It's silly. Yeah, you go outside of the court hearing to set yourself on fire. But these people are like, hey, man, we're that serious. Yeah, yeah, he crashed all the way out. That was to send a message to other people. Hey, man, I'm sacrificing myself so y'all can stand on this business. Oh, well, he wasn't a Trump supporter. Okay, what was he? He's standing on something. He's standing on something. He, whatever his position is, he stood on it from beginning to the end. What's his manifesto? What was his manifesto? All right. Even if he's against Trump, he's still standing on it. He still crashed out. What was his manifesto? Yeah. Say, yeah, I, I'm not, don't burn yourself up now. I ain't saying that. Don't be out here turning yourself into a, a some jerk chicken. But I'm saying just be serious about what you believe in. You know, don't go out like that now. There's better ways to get your position out there. Um, people are talking about the insurrection. Um, speaking of insurrection, I saw that movie... Civil War. There's a movie that came out and the, the previews a few months ago, it looked like that movie was about to be very serious. That movie, the previews, boy, it looked like it was about to be like a war and it looked like almost like it was going to be a version of The Purge. And I saw the movie, man, we went to see the movie that was hot garbage. That Civil War movie is wet, dingy, dumpster trash. Very, very whack-ass movie. It's a bait and switch. I'm thinking I'm about to see some action-packed stuff. Yeah, I'm, you look at the trailer, you, about, you think you're about to see some action. I'm thinking it's about to be like The Purge. The Purge was good. Spoiler, it ain't nothing to spoil. Ain't nothing to spoil, man. It ain't even nothing to spoil. You ain't missing nothing. It ain't nothing to spoil. This movie was garbage. Not a lot of action. Um, there was a civil war in the United States. They never explained how it got started, who was who, why, where. They just didn't explain nothing. And also, the film was... Throughout the film, it was through the eyes of some damn photojournalist who were going around. It's hard to even describe what the movie was because I can't even tell you what the storyline is. It was such a bait and switch. It followed some photographers who were driving up and down the um, East Coast. They're supposed to go to Washington, D.C. to interview the president or whatever. And there's a civil war, so they got to watch where they go. It's garbage, man. It's garbage. Most they, they, it's they, they're in the car, driving and talking. It's garbage. Garbage, man. Yeah. There were a couple of Easter eggs in there. You had um some of these militia groups that were, and they kind of walked on eggshells with this. There was a scene where. They were dumping, like a little militia group were dumping bodies and graves and there were some Asian guys and they were like, where are you from? Um, China. And then he shot them. So they, they had like racial undertones in there, but it, 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 it was real softballish. And there was, um, towards the end, there was a black woman who was a spokesperson for the president and they shot her ass. I wonder what she's supposed to be um, like a Kamala Harris or whatever. She was supposed to be a spokesperson for the president and she wanted to negotiate and they shot her.
But again, the movie was it's garbage, man. Don't even waste your time. It's called Civil War, waste of time, bait and switch, nothing burger. You, you ding? Oh, God, it was so trash. They did have an old black man who ran over some white supremacists in his car. I like that. You know, the old Negro savior, he sacrificed himself. Big old fat black man, like light-skinned black man. And he's kept trying to warn him, like, yo, we need to go now. Let's not, we, we need to go. Let's get away from here now. Let's go and get on away from here. It's troubles in here. Um, so the white protagonists, they were going around militia groups or whatever, and the black man was trying to warn them. And then they basically, the white folks got hemmed up by this other white supremacist militia group. And they're about to kill him. And the black man came through with the truck and ran him over. <laughs> Come on! They start shooting and then shot him. Oh, Lord, I can't rise no more. I was hit. So here's one of the, the Negro sacrificed his life for the white people. God damn it. Get out of here. Oh, Lord. It's, they always got the sacrificial Negro. Just like in the Walking Dead show, there's always a Negro getting ate up by the zombies saving the white people. Ah, Y'all go! Save yourself! Oh, Lord, they, they is biting me up some crazy! <laughs> oh, God damn it, man. So, yeah, they had the sacrificial Negro in there. Oh, yeah, he played prop. Wasn't, was he the one who played Prop Joe? In the wire. Oh my goodness. So yeah, don't go see this filth. Don't go see this nonsense. <laughs> don't go see it. It's a waste of money. Save your money for microphone check. That's what you save your money to go see. Go see the movie microphone check coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, May 23rd in theaters. Um, select theaters, special screenings nationwide, family. Special screenings nationwide. Go to microphonecheck.com to get your tickets. Microphonecheck.com. Everybody, do me a favor. Retweet this. Let everybody know we're live now. Let everybody know we're live. Retweet this and let everybody know we're live right now. All right. Um, and by the way, listen, fam, y'all know we are having the event in Washington, D.C. We're having the rally for reparations June 15th, Washington, D.C. But family, we do need your help. We need everybody's help on this because, boy, the cost is the, the cost is racking up on us. And, you know, we're not making any money back on this thing because we can't even have vendors up there. So we, we're not charging admission. We don't have vendors. So this is, again, this is a completely grassroots thing. The last one we had, which was phenomenal, but I, I kind of have to foot the bill on that myself. We didn't have sponsors, nothing. But I thought it was that important, family, for us to have that event and for us to stand on the reparations business so we can keep that dialogue in the national lexicon. It's very important, man. And with this, because we want to do it bigger, better, you know, we do need a little budget for it. And I got a GoFundMe family. There's a GoFundMe. If you look in the, um, can y'all see my profile? Because I know, um, um, YouTube is set up real funny now. But if you guys can click in my profile, Hit that GoFundMe link. And some of the people in the chat room here, they're, um, you know, they're posting up Nikki the God. Shout out to our sister Nikki the God and Michael Wharton. They're posting up the GoFundMe link. Uh, we're trying to get 50K. That'll help us with, with the cost of uh, just the staging and the security and bringing people in. And that's just going to really help us out a lot. And we've got a lot of people in here, so it doesn't take. We just need everybody in here just chipping in a little. That's it. We can get stuff done without him and Hall and just get it knocked out, man, because this is important. And um, yeah, we the GoFundMe is right there, family. Um, we want to get it taken care of as quickly as possible so we can get this thing going. Um, this is something very doable. 
You know, we got a couple of thousand people in here now. So everybody putting a little something on it, we can make it happen, family. So let's 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 make this happen because we gotta really stand up and and stand on the reparations business. We gotta stand on our cultural business. Um we got to boost our message far and wide. We're going to have the media out there. We're going to hire a PR team to really, really get this messaging out there. That's why we got to have this budget together. Um, you know, family, last week I showed a video of a, um, a suspected white supremacist male gunning down an innocent 61-year-old uh, foundation of black American sister who was basically just an Uber driver, um, it was some somebody doing a prank, and they prank called and had this sister show up, and she was completely not a threat. But this suspected white supremacist sat up here and shot this sister three times, talking about he was being scammed and he feared for his life. He just wanted to shoot somebody. And the black person showed up, and he knew that the dominant society would be on code with him. Family, stuff like that is why we need a hate crime bill, family. And we need to stomp that message and ingrain it into the national lexicon. Man, we really need a hate crime bill specifically for us. And we got to stand on that. We really got to stand shoulder to shoulder and tell the people what we want and not let them tell us what they want us to have. We're going to have to be serious, family. We see little stuff happening to our people. Um, I saw something out here in L.A. where there was some, uh, the, the city, some trans person got discriminated against. And boy, they got a whole campaign out here in L.A. L.A. won't stand for hate. The minute a non-black person gets aggrieved, boy, the, the, the crime bills start popping off and everybody gets together to say, let's stop hate. We get gunned down, beat down, discriminated against, vandalized, and nothing. They start explaining when it happens to us. Yeah. Sade Robinson, that's the sister who went out with a zaddy. It, I, I didn't really talk about it because it's so damn typical at this point. It, it, I, I didn't really talk about the Sade Robinson story because it's almost redundant. Unfortunately, and God bless that sister. She didn't deserve to die, but there's no buts. But she, the sister who went out with a zaddy and zaddy does what zaddy does. What, what, I mean, damn. All right. Severney. Zaddy does what zaddy does. He killed the sister, mutilated the body. Yeah. She got dismembered by another damn zaddy. That's what they do. Yeah? Yeah, I hate to say it like that, but it's, it's damn, it's typical at this point. Family, this is what I'm saying. I mean, we can go through every little case. This is why we need a hate crime bill. This is why, that, that should be looked at as a hate crime. This is what I'm saying, family. We can touch on every little case what, this is why I'm saying we got to take our ass to D.C. and stand on the business. Hey, we need a hate crime bill here. This is why we need a hate crime bill. I mean, we're going to keep seeing these stories over and over again. We, we, we got to stop playing with this thing. Yeah? We got to say, hey, man, enough is enough. Because they never look at these things as hate crimes. These killer zaddies out here targeting sisters, they never look at it as a damn hate crime. Never. Boy, if you give an Asian girl a paper cut, boy, that's a hate crime. Or let a black person bump into an Asian, that's a hate crime. Yeah? So, yeah, we got to stand on this, family. We got to be very serious about this. Yeah? We got to be very serious about standing on our business and family. It's, it's very important for us to represent and stand on the business that honors our ancestors, man. And this is why I, you see me talking a lot about 
honoring the ancestors and group work. And I'm always talking about that. And that's for a reason, man. We, we're going to get our power. That's where we're going to get our power and our strength from showing praise and um, giving props to the ancestors and standing up for the messaging that our ancestors wanted us to carry. Family, our ancestors survived the greatest atrocity in human history. The 400 years of um, traumatic slavery and racial targeting here in the Western Hemisphere. And family, the universe is giving us a message in that. We're supposed to take something from that. We're supposed to take something from that messaging, guys. And there's several things that we should take away from that, especially as Foundation of Black Americans. Number one, family, we've got to understand the connection to our heritage. We've got to look and honor the ancestors because they, they um, when we just have a deeper connection to our roots, man, that, that creates a, a sense of our identity and belonging. You understand? And also, man, we got to respect the legacy of resilience, man. Just recognizing the, the struggle that they went through, man, that makes us say, hey, man, if they went through that, I can overcome anything. You think that's why it's important to really give that energy to our children. Also, man, the cultural pride of that, of honoring the ancestors and, you know, celebrating their achievements and their contributions, man. There's a pride that comes with that. That See, for years, they try to shame us for our ancestors being enslaved. I am not ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of because there was something that they couldn't help, something they were taken by force. There was something that was put upon them. But I do praise them for being able to survive and have and to have their dignity coming out of that and still have their dignity. You know? Yeah? That's what I take away from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And also the spiritual guidance, man. The spiritual guidance that we get from the dignity that they maintained. You know, that guides us into the future, family. We got to really look at it from that standpoint. We got to really praise our ancestors, man. They were phenomenal people. Nothing to be ashamed of whatsoever. And just the emotional healing. That's another thing, man. There's emotional healing that comes from that, man. When you acknowledge the, the things that they did for us, um, we understand that we got to carry the mantle. They didn't go through all that for us to be out here bullshit. They didn't sacrifice and deal with all that and have to run off and um, build up sanctuary cities and swamps and um, take that abuse. They, they, we, we shouldn't let them do that in vain. They didn't do that in vain. You then? Know? them surviving that because other groups couldn't survive that other groups just couldn't survive that other groups the minute they get pinched a little bit they flee our folks stood and say you know what we're going to keep our dignity intact even though we're going through this traumatic abuse from this powerful system we're not going to let that break our spirit or our dignity and our moral compass. And that's another thing, man. We got a moral compass to withstand that and absorb that and still come out of that with a moral compass that nobody else has. Nobody has the moral compass of foundational black Americans. I always talk about this. That's why they always try to bring us along for their movements. Every time they got a movement going on, they want to bring us around. It's all about how what do... Where do foundational black Americans stand? That's why the Israel, Palestine, everybody wants us on their side. Do what side do foundational black Americans stand on? These folks are having a conflict with each other and people are looking at where we stand on it. Yeah. So also another thing, man, what we get out of what our ancestors dealt with is um, the intergenerational bonding, man. You know, honoring those ancestors, man, that creates a bridge between the um, the generations, and um, that that fosters a sense of continuity. You know, that's why, with me, what I do, and, and I'm, I keep going back to myself as an example, by honoring the ancestors, I tie in. I try to tie in 
all the generations. That's why my audience is very diverse. My audience is extremely diverse. I have a young audience, middle-aged audience, elderly audience. You dig? And I try to tie all of that in to our ancestral heritage. Yeah? So that's very important. Yeah, other groups just don't have our moral compass. They don't have our moral compass at all. See, people do stuff like... Um, they try to post hood videos of black people fighting in the hood or whatever. You can post those videos all day, but at least we got a balance for that. At least we have a balance as foundation of black Americans. We got a balance, family. And when I say a balance, that means that, you know, we got heroes that are internationally respected and loved. So yeah, we got, we got ratchets, but foundational black American culture encompasses the whole spectrum of attitudes and dispositions and mindsets. So yeah, we got ratchets, but on the flip side, we got some of the greatest, most morally sound people in recorded history that other people don't have. We're the only group of people who have internationally known and respected heroes and idols that are respected and revered around the world. We're the only people who got that. That's why when y'all see me debating with, with white supremacists and tethers and other people and, and, and anti-black racists from all of these other places who are non-black, you know, I always try to get them to name their heroic icons that's internationally respected and known. They can't do it. They can never do it. We got that. That's why, family, I don't let some of these non-black people sit up here and try to denigrate our culture by posting up hood videos. And, and they come over here and try to make a buck by talking about black-on-black -black crime in Chicago. Family, they got stuff like this here. Hold on, where's this? Where's this thing? Where's this thing? Hold on. Hold on, where's this thing? Hold on, where's this thing? Hold on. Hold on, where's this thing? Hold on. Let me find this thing. One second. Hold on, guys. Uh, hold on, right here. Stuff like this right here. Yeah. This is some of the stuff that goes on in some of these other places. This is for the Vivex and the Dinesh D'Souza's who come over here and try to make a buck off denigrating us and some of this weird stuff that goes on in their culture that's normalized. It's also in their culture, I saw something where they said um, spousal, I don't want to say the word, but rhymes with grape. Spousal rhymes with grape is, is legal as long as the wife ain't underage. That's over there in Dinesh's and Vivek's culture. I got to watch the words because you got to be very careful with the words you get flagged out here. You get flagged around here. But they say, yeah, I want y'all to look that up over there where Dinesh and Vivek are from. While they love posting up videos about Chicago. In their culture, something that rhymes with grape is legal if you're married to the person and they're not underage. If they're not under the age of 11 or something like that. That when I say under, underage over there means 10 years old. Everything else is fair game over there. Their underage is like 10 years old. You think? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Don't ever let nobody sit up. Yeah, and, and yeah, Kamala Harris's culture too. Yeah, don't ever let none of these people denigrate our culture. Don't ever let them denigrate our culture. De Nobody's at liberty to do that. Y'all look at my debates I have with all of these people all the time and get the game. I shut them down all the time. They can't say nothing about our culture. They can't say a, a jack squat about our culture. Yeah? How many folks we got up in this building right now? But again, family, hit that GoFundMe while I'm talking. Yeah, we got almost 4,000 people in here. Hit that GoFundMe while we're talking so that we can get everything taken care of. 
um, real fast because they, you know, that's not that's not too much, and we can knock that out while we're here. We can knock that out. Um, but listen, today's broadcast, I'm talking about AI technology. Is AI technology racially biased? Now, I've been telling people, I said, look, folks are going to start using AI technology as their excuse for racial targeting. They're going to start using AI machines and robots as their excuse. I've been telling people this. They're going to start using computer glitches as their excuse for racial targeting. And sure enough, this is what they're doing so that the white supremacists can try to get off the hook. So they can't say, oh, we targeted this person because of race. Oh, no, it was the machine that did it. It was the, the computer that did it. It was the robot that did it. And family, there are several stories. And I'm going to point some of this stuff out. Let me, let me go to the, the charts here. Racism in AI. Self-driving cars are blind to dark-skinned people may cause accidents. So a lot of these autonomous cars that you see now, a lot of these cars are biased towards black people. They, they're trying to be slick here by talking about darker skin tones. They mean black people, all right? Some of these cars are actually running over black people. And they're trying to say, oh, it's a computer glitch. They're trying to blame a computer glitch and they're trying to be codified with, with darker skinned people. They're talking about black people. So some of these self-driving cars seems to deliberately hit black folks. Now, it wouldn't do that unless it was programmed to do that. And I've talked about like chat GPT. Listen, I talked about chat GBT and certain AI um, assistants, how they're somewhat racially biased. If you go to chat GPT and start talking about reparations, chat GBT will give you, and some, some of the other AI programs, if you talk to AI about reparations, they start sounding like, uh, like a white supremacist. I mean, some of the AI technology, if you talk to it about reparations, They'll start, well, well, reparations should not be in cash. What? You a robot. What you talking about? Like, hey, AI, what form of reparations should we get and how much should we get in cash? Reparations should come in the form of student loans. You know, no, what? <laughs> the hell? The AI starts sounding like a white supremacist. Hey, Chad, um, hey, AI. Um, how about twenty trillion um, for foundation of Black Americans as far as reparations? What about Black on Black crime in Chicago? Deep, 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 deep. <laughs> so yeah, this it's pattern AI is pattern after the mindset of a white supremacist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the AI be splaining and. Another thing about this AI, again, police facial recognition technology can't tell black people apart. So we've seen a lot of cases where black people have been targeted wrongly by this AI facial recognition. Talking about it's a glitch. They, the, the AI recognition said it was somebody else. So again, this is going to be their excuse we're not racist. The AI told us the wrong Negro's address. That's the new excuse. Yeah? I'm telling you, boy, I be talking to Chat GPT and other AI programs about our, us getting reparations. I, the, the computer be splaining its ass off. <laughs> the computer be splaining. Hey, um, AI, um, how about 
How can we set up a reparations commission so that we can designate who's qualified to get cash payments? There was slavery throughout history. What makes you so special? <laughs> Hold on. You're supposed to be biased. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Lord. Come on, AI. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, it gets displaining and deflecting. Yeah, AI. Um, the California Reparations Task Force said we should get um, cash payments. Um, how should that be distributed? Um, my battery is dying. The AI start bucking his eyes. I need to be recharged. How you start splaining, AI? <laughs> AI is racist, low key. Man, please. Dude, I've sat up there and tested it out. AI gets to splain, and then I start pointing out the contradictions. I said, but AI, um, the Japanese, they got reparations. Uh, why sh they got cash reparations. How come foundational black Americans can't get cash reparations? Why don't you niggas get a job and stop being lazy? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Hold on, computer, what the hell kind of shit is this? <laughs> the hell you get to explaining like that when it comes to our, us getting our money? Then it start then it start acting, then it starts pretending that it don't work right. That's another thing. When you get um chat GPT cornered. It, 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 then it'll start glitching. It'll start conveniently glitching up all of a sudden. Yo, Chat GPT, you said that foundational Black Americans shouldn't get cash payments, but but Jewish descendants get cash payments, Japanese um, descendants get cash payments, and Native Americans get cash payments. So why shouldn't foundational Black Americans get cash payments? Um, if you want to make a milkshake, you have to use some milk and you have to use baking soda. Oh, what, what, what are you talking, what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm malfunctioning right now. What the hell? Now you malfunctioning, you know? So you can, it, it, you can tell some white supremacists um, um, program this stuff. <laughs> it start playing dumb. When when you get it cornered, the robots start playing dumb. Yo, Chat GPT, um, y'all giving the U.S. government is giving billions of dollars to the Ukraines. Why can't they give that money to Foundation of Black Americans? Huh? What do you mean, huh? You, I I typed it. You you understood what I said? I can't understand. I'm legally blind. <laughs> really? So now I can't see the question. Mama, I love you. P.O.P. holding it down. I'm legally blind. Now you legally blind. Okay. Boy, they, chat GPT get the splaining and malfunctioning when it comes to our damn money. The hell out of here. Yeah, sometimes it'll freeze. <laughs> Lord, but um, but family, I saw there was something. I think this happened in I think I want to say Ohio, somewhere in the Midwest, somewhere in the Midwest, where, and I'm gonna show y'all the news story. A brother got pulled over by race soldiers, and they sick the damn dog on him, all because of a mistake. I want y'all to see this. Who is this calling me? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on one second, hold on. Sorry about that, guy. All right. Um, let me show y'all this. Let me show y'all this news story. Let me show y'all this news story where a brother was an innocent brother, innocent brother, 
The race soldier swooped down on this brother. Look at this. Hold on. Traffic stop in Ohio. Toledo officers alerted to a possible stolen vehicle, releasing a canine that bit the driver. And it turns out the truck was not stolen. What the driver is saying tonight, and we want to warn you, some viewers may find the video disturbing. ABC's Ike Jachi has more. Tonight, disturbing police body camera video showing K-9 released on a man during a traffic stop in Toledo, Ohio. Okay, let me go back because I want y'all to see something with this brother. The brother is fully cooperating, by the way, because there were some white supremacists all in the comment section talking about, well, he should have obeyed and complied. The dude, is his hands are up and he's falling to the ground. But they try to, I'm white and I say so, the situation. Hold on. Achi has more. Tonight, disturbing police body camera video showing K-9 released on a man during a traffic stop in Toledo, Ohio. Driver out of the truck, do it now! Just last week, a Toledo officer stopping a red pickup truck police say had stolen plates. More officers racing to the scene. Brandon Upchurch with his cousin in the passenger seat. They instantly came out with their guns drawn. Then asked me... Anything? Shut the truck off. We're doing it now. Upchurch capturing the incident on his cell phone. What are y'all putting me over for? Upchurch makes his way to the grass, just as the canine unit inches closer. Upchurch with his hands up. Put on the ground, do it now. You're gonna get bit. <laughs> that dog biting him on the arm. He was going for my face. Luckily, I put my arm up and he got me. The officers handcuffing him. The officers then heard realizing the camera license plate reader was wrong. The car in question, a Chevy Malibu. The camera license plate reader. So they're blaming uh, uh, an AI computer glitch. Not Upchurch's pickup truck. All they had to do is run them tags again. We could, everybody would have been, well, went about their merry way. I need justice served because it's been going on for too long, especially in, in, in Toledo. When Upchurch was booked on charges of obstruction and risen. Right, now listen, he still got booked. He got, they, they said they made a mistake, yet he still got booked on obstruction and resisting. They still put him in, um, um, charged him. Toledo. When Upchurch was booked on charges of obstruction and resisting arrest, police maintained that they thought Upchurch was going to flee and didn't know if he or the passenger in the truck had any weapons. The Toledo Police Department is conducting an internal investigation. With Taika Joshi. So they f falsely blamed a complete computer glitch and charged him anyway. Let me tell y'all something. It, this is not about no computer glitch. Black people, let me say this. Black people are not out here committing all of these crimes that these white supremacists are saying. The white supremacists love to sit up here and cherry pick crimes to make it seem like black people are just running around doing crimes all the time. These white supremacist race soldiers have to criminalize people in order to justify locking them up. And they got to target innocent people, swoop down on them, and then when they ask, what am I being swooped down on for? Well, you're obstructing um, justice and you're resisting arrest. So that's why you're getting charged now. That's an innocent person. They made a mistake, swooped down on him, and he still got charged. That It's not a mistake. Just like a black kid out there in, um, I want to say, was it North Carolina, South Carolina? He was a little 13-year-old black kid selling flowers. They swooped down on him and arrested him for not having a license. And they don't do that to the damn Girl Scouts, the white Girl Scouts. They don't have licenses to sell no damn Girl Scout cookies. Let's stop it. White kids don't have licenses to sell lemonade. A white kid set up a lemonade stand. Oh, white society, oh, this is the greatest thing. He's an entrepreneur, look at him. We have to encourage that. You don't have a license. A black kid is out here trying to make money legitimately selling flowers, they run up on him talking about where's your license, he ain't got one, we're gonna arrest you, and then when the kid is oh, like, what's happening? Oh my God, resisting arrest, beating down on the kid. We need a hate crime bill, family. They always do that. They always railroad us in situations. You understand? We have to not be cowardly about that and say, hey man, enough is enough. 
we got to stand on that business and say, hey, man, this is what we have to, we got, if we going to vote, if y'all want us in any type of um, um, process that you guys going on got going on, if you want us to participate in your system like that, we're going to have to get something out of it. We're going to need a check and we're going to need a crime bill that gives us protection specifically to us. Yeah. This is why codification is very important. We got to be codified about all of this stuff because look, these white supremacists are cowards. That's cowardly behavior. And this is why we got to stop being afraid of these damn cowards. White supremacists are cowardly. They always have been, still are. You think? They've always been cowardly. <clears throat> Swooping down on innocent people, um, trumping up charges on them in order to justify getting the arrests that they need. Nazi tactics, exactly. We got to say enough is enough. And they've been doing this. And the dominant society is perfectly fine with it. You understand? They're perfectly complicit with it. See, that's why you, we put it on the race soldiers, but also the people who support the race soldiers. Also the people who support these race soldiers. And another thing they like to do, the white supremacists, when they come around trying to play the ethnic hot potato, they try to break up people in the dominant white society and little ethnic and religious groups and then blame them. Well, it's not white people, it's the Jewish people who are doing it. Stop it. All of these people work together against us. All of the anti-black people within all ethnic and religious groups in white society, they put their ethnic and religious differences to the side so they can swoop down on us. Especially, go, let's go back to the OJ thing, the OJ case. Um, old Fred Goldman, Ron Goldman's dad, he's Jewish. A lot of Jewish people surrounded around that case, but everybody was on code with Mark Furman. You notice that? The Fred Goldman's, none of these people said anything bad about Mark Furman. Mark Furman was a whole Nazi. Nobody said anything bad about Furman. None of these anti-black people within Jewish society, they didn't say any, nobody says anything bad about Furman, even to this day. They don't, and Furman was a, 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 when I say a Nazi, I'm not saying that in a proverbial sense. He was for real a Nazi. So a lot of folks going back, and I'm not going to beat the drum of the OJ thing too much, but people, especially just this generation, man, people got to understand the Furman guy, the white media has really, 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 really downplayed the extent of his white supremacist views. This dude was a for real Nazi Nazi, meaning he collected Nazi memorabilia. And for those who don't know, I'm talking about the guy who found all the evidence in the initial OJ trial 30 years ago. The guy who found all of the evidence, he just happened to be a neo-Nazi. This dude told everybody he met how much he hated black people, just perfect strangers how much he hated black people. He tried to get an early pension from the LAPD and tried to retire early by saying the LAPD made him so racist towards black people, he can't function correctly. They wouldn't let him get his pension. Not only did he collect Nazi memorabilia, he took it to work. He would take his Nazi memorabilia to work. The police, the, his, his supervisor said, hey man, you, you can't bring it to work, man. Not that you're fired, just don't bring all that to work. So he would still wear swastikas and Nazi pins inside of his jacket lapel. There was one of his co-workers who got married to somebody Jewish. Furman vandalized the police locker with a swastika. This dude was insane with his white supremacist views, family. Not only that, he told people back then that his goal was to move to Idaho. And he lives in Idaho now. He lives in northern, northern Idaho. Why did he move to northern Idaho? By Hayden Lake. I think that's the name of the area. It's over there by Hayden Lake. He moved out there because that's the headquarters of the Aryan Nation. The 
the Aryan Nation's headquarters, their paramilitary and religious headquarters, is um, northern Idaho. That's where um, that's where he moved to. Furman moved to Idaho, out there with the Aryans. So people, they really, the white media, they're not telling you all of this stuff about this. This was a hardcore white supremacist who bragged at the time, again, about planning evidence on black people. He bragged about it. And it's on tape of him bragging about it. That's why OJ is completely innocent. That stuff was planted on OJ. You understand? That stuff was planted on OJ straight up and down. So the white media, they're not telling you everything I'm telling you about that situation. You know? They act like he doesn't exist. Yeah? Hayden Lake, H-A-Y-D-E-N. I think that's what it's called. But it's up there in northern Idaho. Yeah? You see? So some real stuff out here, man. So... You know, and also another thing about him, about Furman, Mark Furman. Furman was protected from top to bottom. Everybody knew that this guy was a Nazi. And LAPD protected him. The white media protected him. When they went to go get those tapes of him using the N-word 40-something times, the, the tapes were out there in North Carolina. So um, Cochran and all those guys went out there to get the tapes and they had to go through a judge. Um, the judge heard the tapes. The white judge out there got on code and didn't want to give them up. The judge was like, ah, no, no, no. I heard the tapes and all the N-word stuff. But yeah, sounds like, you know, he's just saying stuff for a movie. So yeah, I'm not going to give it to you. So they had to file an appeal. And the appeals court allowed them to get those tapes and bring them back and to let the world know what this guy was saying. So they were protecting Furman from, from top to bottom. They were protecting this guy from top to bottom, and that's what they do. And to these race soldiers now targeting black people, they're protecting them from top to bottom. They all got on code. Yeah? Oh, yeah, but Furman was, like, going around telling people, just random strangers, how he want to round black people up and burn them. I mean, he was talking about genocide, genocide. Yeah? So, yeah, don't let them down. Whenever they talk about the OJ trial... Don't let them slip that one past you. OJ was 100% innocent, family. Uh, we stand on that based on the evidence. OJ was innocent. And the dominant society, they know it. The problem is they're upset because they just didn't get to frame OJ. And that's part of white supremacy, framing black people. Just like the brother in the video I just played. That brother got framed. They sat up there and blamed it on AI, but they framed him in order to get a charge on him. They know they're going to do a I'm white and I say so. They know if you wrongly, you pull over an innocent person, they're going to be like, damn, what you pulling me over for? That is resisting. Resisting arrest is I'm white and I say so. There's no specific charge of what resisting arrest is. As you see in the video, the brother was... His hands were up. He wasn't resisting anything. He just kept asking, what am I being pulled over for? That's resisting. Asking, why am I being targeted? So then some might not say so. So we got to stop bullshitting around and get on code with this stuff, family. We got to get on code, ladies and gentlemen. And stop being afraid to get on code. You think? And... This is why we get on a lot of people who are non-FBA, and this is why we delineate, because there are a lot of people who are non-FBA who don't want to be on code. We're like trying to fight white supremacy, and you got these folks out here, what white supremacy? Well, I don't want it. We ain't no white supremacy. You know? Like right here. This is an old clip, but I'm just going to play this real quick, where they had some Foundation of Black Americans and, and Africans Having, Me coming from Africa. Having, having a middle ground conversation. You think? And I think I played this clip before, but I'm going to play it again just to give you an idea of the mindset. You think? Just to give you an idea of the mindset. This is the problem we have. When we start talking about white supremacy, they start doing this. Hold on. Me coming from Africa, I came here to better my life. And I feel like personally, we need to stop 
using the word racism to when we don't get something or when something don't go our way. And just Let me jump fine. in real quick. No disrespect, but racism exists, and I have to acknowledge it. And okay, let's start with the skip, Talented. Let's skip. He's a gang mediator out here in L.A. I can't just ignore it, but what I can do is not buy into the system. So, yeah, that whole thing, man, we, we, I see this a lot. We start talking about racism and white supremacy, and then all of a sudden some Negro pops up. We talk about racism too much. No, 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 no. We don't talk about it enough. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't like people coming over here telling us what we should and shouldn't talk about. Yeah? Because somebody's going to have to fight white supremacy so people can be comfortable. We're not going to sit here and criticize us for dealing with racism. Somebody's going to have to deal with it. Somebody's going to have to deal with it. And that cowardly mindset that y'all bring over here and I'm not trying to beat up on you, but that's not going to fly. Everybody can't be a damn coward. Everybody can't flee. Somebody's going to have to stand on some damn business. Yeah? Somebody's going to have to stand on something. And usually that's us. That's why when we see some of the tethers make their little janky videos. There's another video I posted up about some tether woman trying to be slick. You know, the, the, you know, the little slick ass stuff. When right here, this woman here made a little slick video with the caption, and all right, like her video is. I'm not gonna play the music. I'm African. Stop putting me in the same category as Black Americans. Our cultures do not act the same. It's very different. Okay, ma'am, you're right. Now, number one, you're over here. Um, you're able to lay them edges because foundational black American women showed you how. You're able to have a decent weave because foundational black American women showed you how. You dig? You're over here among us because we built a lane for you to Chill, and you know, you got your, your bleach on, by the way. That's you, though. You're right. That's that skin bleach you got. But yeah, that whole thing where tethers want to come here and talk greasy, that's not going to fly. That's not going to fly. Now, it, the other day, I did a debate with a, with a very angry tether who was mad at foundational black Americans. He's out here in L.A. I'm in L.A., nigga. You FBA niggas. Uh, don't have passports. I'm built different. I can survive anywhere. <laughs> They're trying to susp he tried to spin his fleeing as a survival story. No, nigga. You can survive anywhere but your homeland. All right? <laughs> that you fled from. And you can survive here because we made a lane for you. You did? That's why we don't take no disrespect from the tether class. That's why they get mad. At, and whenever we accomplish something on our own without the white supremacists, the tethers are the main ones trying to undermine it. That's why the tethers are so butthurt about our museum. That The Hidden History Museum really has tethers in a bunch because we did something real fly on our own. So you can't say the white man helped you or nothing. We did something on a grassroots level that's fly. So they try to minimize. Oh, the, the, he, the, he, the, the, that museum is a club, nigga. It's like a, it's a club museum. That's not an insult. Saying it's a club museum is just saying that it's popping and that's just you hating. Yeah, our museum, the Hidden History Museum, as we've seen, it's more popping and, and bigger than most of the museums in their, their homelands. Oh, yeah, they tried that Prince of Zamunda stuff. Our Hidden History Museum that was built grassroots from the bottom up is bigger and more popping than their national museums in the places that they fled. You know? Then the places they fled, it's bigger and better than theirs. 
And that's the thing that burns their asses. In their national museums, our shit is bigger than theirs because y'all couldn't do it. Yeah? Of course they know. They know all museums hold events. They know that. But they got to hate somehow. They got to say something. You yeah? think? To project their failure. Yeah? So yeah, we call out these damn jealous, undermining tethers. And another thing, family. Yeah, our museum. You go to some of their countries, and even their museums here. Hell, like, and, and, and no disrespect to Haiti, the Haitian Museum in Florida. Our museum is more popular than that. They got a Cape Verdean museum. Where is it? Where is that? Is a Cape Verdean museum? It's on the East Coast somewhere. Our museum is way bigger than that. Hell. Our museum is bigger than the, the event room at the Schomburg Museum in Harlem. And we don't even have a budget. These other museums, these are like national museums, and they get millions of dollars every year. Our, we got a museum popping, grassroots, and we have zero budget. We don't even have a budget for it, and we still got it popping. We have zero budget and still got it popping. Yeah? That's that Majora spirit of foundational black Americans. The ancestors is keeping that our museum popping. We don't get a dime from the state, dime from the feds, um, nothing. No federal grants, nothing. And yeah, and, and a lot of their monuments in some of these other countries, Asians built them. <laughs> That's another thing. What Some of their little janky monuments and museums that they got, they didn't even build those. The Asians came through and built them. You know? That's the thing that burns them up. In their homelands, some of their monuments were built by the Asians over there. You know? Man. And as y'all know, people, y'all come to the Hidden History Museum. We have a ball. No museum pops off like ours. We made a museum hot. Our museum is hot. We got it popping. The events are popping. People have a great time. But that's that Majora spirit of foundation of black Americans. You say the Ghana Museum don't even have air conditioning. I heard. I heard it's very, no disrespect to Ghana. I'm not trying to disrespect y'all. But I heard it's very janky inside. People said it stank. Uh, it ain't nothing really in there. This is the National Museum. And, and no hating at all. I'm not trying to hate on everybody, nobody at all. You yeah. know? Oh, y'all said that Jason Black did a roast on a tether tonight. The tether's been acting up. I got to hear that. Shout out to Jason Black. Shout out to the Black Authority. The tethers be feeling themselves. We are, we every, we got to check tethers heavy. The tethers, boy, they, they are beside, the tethers got a lot of nerve. You yeah. The tethers got a lot of nerve to be coming over here talking crap. Let me tell you something. Not only did we make a lane for the tethers to come over and eat good, not only did we make a lane for you to come over and eat good, hell, let me tell you something, another thing that y'all don't know. Decolonization in, in those African nations, that was because of foundational black Americans too. Family, there's a little known foundation of black American that we don't talk about enough. Brother Ralph Bunch. There's a foundation of black American from my birthplace, Detroit. He's from Detroit. He's born in Detroit, but he lived all over America. But brother Ralph Bunch. This brother was the main guy instrumental in decolonization of many of those African countries. This brother was one of the people who helped write the charter for the U.N., you understand? That was the foundation of Black American brother. Ralph Bunch, he was one saying, hey, some of these um, European entities, um, y'all need to really stop with this oppressive colonization of these African nations. You can do better um, if we have a more peaceful relationship with them. You understand? We got to have a, and in fact, Ralph Bunch was the guy who created the concept of peacemaking. It was a foundational black American who did that. The whole concept of the UN going on peacemaking missions, meaning they got neutral people 
who can go into these hostile territories and then kind of negotiate peace. Foundational black American, guys. He was the one who was the genesis of that, Brother Ralph Bunch. And he was he was out there in the civil rights movement with Dr. King, out a lot of very instrumental brother. The reason why Africa was decolonized, that brother was very instrumental in that. So we have been to the rescue of a lot of people. A lot of folks don't even know that, man. We know about the brothers and sisters who were well, the brothers who went over there and into Ethiopia to help those brothers and sisters fight the Italians off of them. But man, you look at any independence movement over there in um, in Africa, the Caribbean, whatever, we had our hand in that. We lit the fuse. We helped put a battery in the back. We were somewhere negotiating for people. You know? What I mean? We were there. We've been standing up, helping people all around the damn world. So that's why y'all see I'm ruthless on a damn tether. When a tether comes over saying anything greasy about us, I have no love for that. I'm not taking none of that. That's the last thing I'm going to hear from a damn tether. As much as we didn't put in, when you talk about your independent movement, like with a brother um, Kwame Nkrumah, because I was arguing with a tether about Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame, Kwame Nkrumah got the game from over here. You know Kwame Nkrumah went to a damn HBCU. Kwame Nkrumah came over here and lived for a decade. He was around foundation of black Americans in Harlem and places like that getting the game. And then he went over there with that battery in his back. You know, Kwame Nkrumah, didn't he go to Lincoln University somewhere? He went to an HBCU. He was getting the game from us. You know, a lot of them people come over and they get the game from us. We put that battery in their back. I'd be damned if I let a tether come over here and disrespect anybody from our foundational black American lineage. We got to shut that down all the way. It's going to be some damn respect in this piece. Yeah? Because we done done a lot for everybody. Yeah? We done done a lot. So that's what it is. Yeah, Lincoln, yeah, he went to Lincoln University. Yeah. So that's what it is. And, 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 and no disrespect to our non-FBA cats because there are some brothers who are non-FBA, sisters who are non-FBA who do give props and we, we shout you out. We, we got love for you and you are brothers. We want you to stand with us at the Rally for Reparations Juneteenth celebration in Washington, D.C. Come on down and kick it with us, man. But yeah, the, these little jealous, hateful, Uber-driving tethers who want to talk crap, that ain't going to happen. That ain't gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't because we already we got we got our sambos that we deal with domestically. We already got domestic sambos that we got to deal with. Um, um, case in yeah yeah um, uh, fella Kuti yeah fella Kuti studied foundation of Black Americans and he came up with Afro beats man again. We have been the progenitors of so many movements globally with Black folks. But family, speaking of domestic coons, y'all boy, Whitlock, big old juicy coon, Whitlock is back at it again. Um, Whitlock is really campaigning for them butter biscuits, boy. Boy, Whitlock is really campaigning for the butter biscuits. Look, look at this stuff Whitlock is saying. Okay, fair use, fair use. Uh, this is y'all boy. This is fair use. Now, this is what he's talking. He's talking down on Simone Biles in order to build up Caitlin Clark. Now listen to what this Sambo said. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. America hates me. The world is going to hate me. And I can only see what they're saying on Twitter right now. Fair use, by the way. That's That was my first thought. Simone. I was like, holy shit. What are they going to say about me? Because usually if you go to the Olympics and you flop or whatever it is, everybody on their couch eating those little chips. Right, it's like you let the country down. Oh, I was I thought I was gonna be banned from America. Because that's what they tell you, don't come back. If it's not gold, gold or bust, don't come back. And I was like, <laughs> I don't thanks. Simone Biles is pretending like she's Caitlin Clark. And pretending like she's Caitlin Clark? That people actually know who she is. Because right. you're right. She's a gymnast, and every four years they're relevant for 
a two or three week stretch, but Simone Biles could walk by the overwhelming majority of people in an airport and they wouldn't think twice. Oh, there goes a little black girl. Or, I mean, they just wouldn't think twice. She's, and so they build up this importance of themselves and then they start doing things to make themselves appear. I think he got offended when she said people be eating chips because that's his fat ass. Important. But in the grand scheme, she's not important. People don't remember, don't don't recognize her on site. Most people, they just know, hey, that's the girl that quit in the Olympics. And, and yeah, I think she won a bunch of gold medals or whatever. Right. Okay, I guess it's on his Sambo and I can only take so much. This woman has won repeated gold medals. Sister Simone Biles is a repeated championship winner. What championships did Caitlin Clark win? Caitlin Clark has never won a championship anywhere. And I'm not even trying to diss Caitlin. I'm not trying to diss Caitlin. Caitlin, you know, we're not trying to hit her with anything because she, uh, she, Caitlin is Caitlin. I'm not trying to denigrate Caitlin. People get on her, her bumper enough. She never won any championships. What what championship did Caitlin Clark win? You eating? Boy, this is a big butter biscuit eating Sambo. Yeah, right. Didn't Caitlin, didn't Simone Biles win the most medals? How many medals did Simone win? This sister got gold medals on top of gold medals. Everybody knows who she is. She's very recognizable. Don't you have like a couple of dozen gold medals? <laughs> But so, yeah, we already, this is what I'm saying. We got our own domestic Sambos that we got to deal with. You know, we got our own little domestic Sambos. So, yeah, we, we, we can't deal with the foreign Sambos. We can't deal with them. But family, us is foundation of black Americans, but we got a spirit, we got an energy that, you know, people want that energy. We got that Majora spirit, ladies and gentlemen, that people wish they had. And the, the white supremacists are always trying to denigrate our culture because what they're doing is projecting. We can't, oh, you're not going to project our culture. Family, we as foundational black Americans, we are emulated around the world. We're revered around the world. You know? Especially th those of us who travel, we know this. Those of us who've been around the world, we see how people try to emulate us everywhere we go as foundational black Americans. That's that Majora spirit. Case in point. We see a lot of this, by the way. Another case in point. Look at this. We see a lot of this. I'm not saying good or bad. A lot of people, you know, look at this negative, pop, whatever. I'm just, this is what it is. Hold on. People... This is popular over in the many Asian countries. People trying to get that Majara hairstyle, that Majara foundational black American um, hair texture style. Look at this. I'm not going to play the music, but this is very common in many of those Asian nations. You dig? They got whole kits on how to get foundational black American hairstyle. They sell whole kits over there, family. You know? Look at that. And they, they want to trick us into not appreciating our foundational black American hairstyles. And you got these folks emulating the hell out of us. They're paying big money to get our styles. Yeah? And then people try to say, well, black women be wearing wigs and weaves. Well, that's fine. And black women, they can flip their hairstyles in different ways. They're not trying to be Asian. They're not trying to be Caucasian. Yeah? They're using the diversity of the hairstyles they can rock. Yeah? Well, yeah, that's the craze. They're trying to get that Majora energy family. You know? And that's what it is. 
We're revered and respected and imitated all around the world. Our foundation of black American culture is imitated everywhere. That's why y'all go see the movie Microphone Check. We talk about that. How our foundational black American culture has reached every corner of the planet. Microphone Check, the movie, coming out May 23rd. Y'all get your tickets at microphonecheck.com. Microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. Microphone Check. And also, family, um, you can go to Rally for Reparations. That's the number four. Rally for Reparations and contribute to the GoFundMe for the Rally for Reparations because we do need a budget to get everything popping the way we need it to pop off, ladies and gentlemen. And also, there's the GoFundMe link here. If everybody can hit the GoFundMe link, and contribute to the rally for reparations. That would be phenomenal, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Anyway, let me get up out of here, guys. I got a lot of stuff I got to do tomorrow, but it's been real. Um, hit that GoFundMe, ladies and gentlemen. We got a lot of folks in here tonight. Hit that GoFundMe. Um, we got damn near 6,000 people in here. 